Good morning, guys. It is Friday, April 5th, 2024. This is Bathrow Business. I'm Georgi Oganov. I got my coffee and I got the news. And today we're going to talk about something very special, kids. We're going to talk about the economy. So, in the title of today's video, I am going to talk about every reason I think that there is no recession coming. Now, the reason for this video is normally I just report on the news to you guys every day and I talk about my business and what we're doing and the ventures we're taking, etc., etc. Sometimes I share my personal investment advice as far as what I'm investing in right now. I'll tell you what stocks I'm buying or thinking about buying. So I'm just trying to keep this as kind of a daily blog about my business and a daily blog on the economy as a whole. But there's an unhealthy trend on YouTube because it doesn't matter who the financial advisor is, who the YouTube celebrity is, who the uh, influencer is, they're all talking about how a recession is coming and that you should prepare because it's going to be worse than 08. I see that everywhere right now. Everything is going to be worse than 2008. The biggest problem I have with this is these people do not know when a recession is going to come because nobody knows when a recession is going to come. Recessions are unpredictable by nature because if you knew when they were going to come, you'd make loads of money and predict the market. Hedge funds, private equity firms, billion dollar corporations that have tools out there that can analyze the market in ways we can't imagine. Try to predict what the market is going to do and even they get hurt by recessions. In fact, oftentimes, they're hurt more heavily than the individual consumer during a recession because they're over leveraged. So to say that a recession is coming is incredibly stupid. But to say that a recession is coming that's worse than 08 is even dumber. And the dumbest thing you could say is that a recession is coming now when all the economic data is showing that it's not. Now, a recession is going to happen at some point or another. So it's easy to say, oh, I was right, I just timed it wrong. But timing it wrong and being wrong is pretty much the same thing. If, you, if you're too early to a technology, if you're too early to say something, you're not making the moves in the market you're supposed to be making. So if you're going to be sitting around and waiting to enter the market, that's an opportunity cost that you're missing out. If you're not going for a certain venture, if you're not buying a certain business, if you're not buying a certain stock, if you're not purchasing a home simply because you think something is going to happen, then you're going to be on the sidelines waiting and opportunity is going to pass you by. You can't be afraid to lose money. The entire point of the economy is to take risk, and that risk does come with a downturn. But the other thing you have to remember is over time, you will win as long as you're participating in the economy. You, even if you lose money in the short term, you're going to gain it in the long term. In 2008, we saw an unprecedented housing crash that bottomed out prices in a way we will never see again. That was a once in a lifetime occurrence. I myself benefited from that occurrence. I am currently in a house that I bought at 25 in 2012 when the housing market collapsed. I bought my place for 175000 Currently, it's probably worth a little over half a mil. That's an amazing investment. And in addition, when housing prices surged in 2020, I took a refi on my house, bought, took equity out, and bought property up in Bear Lake. Now, those of you that are in Utah know that that area is growing exponentially and is worth a lot of money. And since that investment, my property has actually gained 100 k just based off county estimates alone. So there are opportunities that do occur, and I take advantage of them. But I wasn't sitting around waiting for them. I just saw the opportunity and I took it. And those opportunities exist in the market every single day. And you shouldn't wait for a recession in order to spring on opportunity, because the recession may never come. Four years ago, when lockdown happened, everybody thought we were going to face a massive recession. And we did during lockdown because not, no commerce was moving. But the second lockdown ended, the economy started growing and never stopped. And it's continuing to grow. So don't sit around and tell me that, oh, you know that a recession's coming and it's going to be worse than 08 when you are operating off of a false premise with no data to back it up. Now, if you came to me with an actual statistic, I could believe you. But saying BS stuff like uh, the U.S. debt has never been higher. Uh, they're just printing money, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes, that is all true, but that doesn't mean a recession is going to come. If the if growth of the economy outpaces debt, then we actually don't have a problem. And currently, even though I don't agree with this, I do not agree that we should be printing money into the infinite universe. I think we should be more conservative. But to give you some idea, I've talked about this before on my channel. Japan's debt to uh, GDP ratio 
is like two and a half uh, times. So they have like 263% uh, debt versus their GDP. They are outpacing their debt based on GDP. There's nothing that says the U.S. can't do it either. So as much as I wouldn't like that scenario for us to have more debt than GDP growth, we could easily see that scenario. We could easily see the United States exceed massive debts in order to keep the economy propped up. Because a lot of the arguments I'm hearing online is when the recession comes, the government won't be able to print their way out of it. Yeah, yeah, they will because they've done it before. I don't agree with that measure. I think it's a bad thing to do. I think the worst thing that happened was in 08 when we bailed out the banks. If we had just let them fall and collapse and rebuild the way the economy should, then we wouldn't have a lot of the problems we currently have with the economy, with inflation and asset growth that is disproportional to wages. We could have fixed a lot of stuff. It was a day of reckoning moment for us, and we messed it up. But that's not to say that the recession coming is going to be worse than 08 and that the government won't be able to spend their way out of it. The other reason I know that is this happened just last year. We had banks default, and the government came in and reshuffled things and printed money and acquired debt, and everything was fine. So don't think just because a recession could happen that you're positioned well to make money. Okay, you have to be in the market. You have to be taking risks. Do not wait for a recession. So now I'm going to share with you guys all the data I have of why I think there's not a recession coming. Now, again, I can't predict the market. I could very well be wrong tomorrow, but I'm just doing this as a counter to the YouTube narrative that recession is coming. Okay, let's talk about jobs because today we got a monster jobs report. Job growth came out from the Labor Department and we gained 303,000 jobs and it actually dropped unemployment back down to 3.8%. Last time we reported these numbers, unemployment actually grew to 3.9%. It is back down. Labor force participation also increased from February by 0.2%. Healthcare added 72,000, government jobs were se added 71,000, leisure and hospitality added 49,000, construction added 39,000, retail added 18,000, which is a good metric to have, seeing as how retail is constantly on the chopping block because of online retail, uh, online sales, etc. But that's a very good number to add in a single month. And other services that are your miscellaneous jobs that can't be qualified. Uh, can't be narrowed down into a single category, added 16,000. Another metric, housing. U.S. foreclosure rates are below pre-pandemic levels. So even though the cost of buying a home is higher than it's ever been, and even though mortgage debt is higher than it's ever been, default rates are at their lowest. Default rates are at 0.26% for 2023. In 2019, it was at 0.36%. So housing is in a healthier place than it was pre-pandemic levels. Uh, housing prices are also dropping across the United States. Now, housing is very much a local economy. Your prices may not be going down, but another region in the country is. Averages will always be skewed from, uh, based off your highest and your lowest numbers. But housing is still going down nationally because interest rates are remaining high. Rents are dropping uh, nationally as well. Rents are, uh, keep dropping month to month to month. Next metric, car sales. Car sales are up 5.1% in the first quarter of 2024. For two days straight, I've been recording record profit sales for every car manufacturer with the exception of GM and Tesla. Uh, the US GDP in 2023 grew 6.3%. Compare that to China at 5.2%. China, the all-powerful mega house economy, grew slower than the United States. And that is double from the fact when you consider the fact that China is still considered a developing economy. Developing economies will always grow faster than mature economies. So all these metrics are why I say that there is not going to be a recession anytime soon. I could be completely wrong, but at least my claim is data supported, whereas a lot of the sentiment on YouTube is just feeling. It's just selling you an idea of, oh, in to a year, in two years, in three years, there's going to be a recession. That's when you make money. That's not true. You make money every single day. You can take opportunity or you cannot take opportunity. If you were waiting to enter the economy and you didn't buy NVIDIA, you lost out on a ton, ton of money. So the question is, what's in the NVIDIA of today that you're missing out on because you're waiting for a recession? Okay. If you see opportunity, you have to take it. That's the point of today's video. 
that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to talk about today. I do want to add one little other caveat, and that is about the Federal Reserve, one of my favorite subjects. So the Minneapolis uh, Minneapolis Federal Reserve President, Neil Kashari, uh, is predicting that there, he's going to be saying zero rate cuts in 2024. I actually really like Neil Kashari because he's come out against uh, central bank uh, digital currency. Um, I think he's a very level-headed economist, so I would pay attention to what he's saying. And he is saying zero rate cuts, and he is a member of the Federal Reserve. So just keep that in consideration. That's kind of a side note away from the rest of the video. But uh, he's a very intelligent guy. I follow him whenever I can. Anytime he makes a statement, I think it carries a lot of weight. That's pretty much it. I hope you guys have a productive Friday. I hope you have a great weekend, and I'll see you back here Monday.